Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Now, Ericus is a fan favorite character who I believe was killed off since Square couldn't afford to keep paying Mark Hamill to voice him. In all seriousness, though, his death by the hands of his own son, basically, was a turning point in Terra's delve into darkness, which would eventually lead him to be possessed by Xanwin. But what if we change that? What if Ericus decided to be a reasonable person and not attack Ventus? The whole reason Ericus decided to attack Ventus in the first place is because he wanted to stop the Keyblade from being forged. But here I'll say that Ericus doesn't attack Ven, since if he wants to stop Xehanort from summoning the Keyblade, all he has to do is track Xehanort down and put a stop to him once and for all himself. He's been too trusting and allowing Xehanort to do his evil deeds, and now it's time for him to finally defeat his former friend once and for all and stop this madness. Terra arrives shortly after and is concerned for Ven's safety, but Ericus tells him that he has nothing to fear. He's going to go and put a stop to Xehanort himself. Terra tells his master that Xehanort hasn't been doing any wrong in his eyes so far, but Ericus reveals that he plans to start up another Keyblade War, and he's been using Terra this whole time. And it's Xehanort's fault that Terra has darkness inside of him, not Terra's. I believe that Terra and Ven would believe their own master over Xehanort, and they tell Ericus that they'll go with him to put a stop to Xehanort. Ericus snaps at them, saying that Xehanort will use the two of them for his own personal gain, and orders them to stay behind. Ericus then leaves for the Keyblade Graveyard and finds Aqua there as well. Aqua is confused in why her master is there, but Ericus just tells her that he told Terra and Ven to stay home, since their being here might allow Xehanort to win. Xehanort is obviously very unhappy that Ven and Terra aren't there, and he sends Vanitas off to go forge the Keyblade, with Ventus back in the land of departure. Vanitas departs, and an enraged Ericus tries to stop him, but Xehanort knocks him back and tells Ericus he's been waiting a long time to end this, and the two engage in a battle. Aqua tries to help, but Ericus tells her he'll handle Xehanort, and she should return home to help Terra and Ven. Back in the land of departure, Terra and Ven discuss going to help Ericus, since they can't just sit here and do nothing while he may be fighting for his life. So the two prepare themselves to go head off and put a stop to this whole ordeal, when suddenly, Vanitas arrives and instantly knocks out Terra. Ven is furious and goes to attack Vanitas, which is just what he wanted, and the two battle it out. Unfortunately, their battle plays out as normal, and Vanitas is formed. Right before he goes to return to Xehanort, Aqua arrives and their battle plays out as normal too, except there is no Mickey to help. Instead, back at the Keyblade Graveyard, Mickey arrives and helps Ericus battle it out with Xehanort. Ericus and Mickey working together is enough to bring Xehanort down, and Xehanort knows this isn't part of the plan and he needs to escape, but Ericus has had enough. He goes up to Xehanort and tells him that this all could have been avoided if he wasn't so stubborn. He used to be a good person back in the day, but the darkness has fully corrupted him and he will continue to hurt more people until his goal is achieved. So he has no choice but to finish this now. With one large attack of light, Xehanort is obliterated. In the line of departure, Venetus is about to finish Aqua when Terra comes up behind him and knocks him away. Terra helps Aqua up and apologizes for all the wrong he's caused up to this point, and now he's going to make it right by helping to save Ven. The two fight together, and along with Ventus fighting himself, they are able to defeat Venetus and destroy the Keyblade. The Keyblade's destruction causes the land of departure to almost be destroyed, but Terra and Aqua are able to summon their Keyblade armor in time to save Ven and survive. Ericus and Mickey return and find the three all knocked out and half of the land destroyed, so they take them and return to Yen Sid's castle, where Ericus and Yen Sid discuss Ventus' fate. Xehanort is no more, and his only other ally is on Radiant Garden, and is no longer a threat at this point. Although, the Battle of Venetus has caused Ventus' heart to fall into a state of sleep, and he can't be woken up. Aqua and Terra don't take this news very well, and try to do everything they can to wake him up, but it can't be done. A while later, the land of departure is fixed up, and the group continues to train and find ways to wake Ventus. Ericus trains with Terra to control his darkness as well, and I think Terra would show him that he's got everything under control with the darkness, and the two would make up with Terra finally becoming a master. After a few years, Terra and Aqua remember those two boys that they came across on their journey, and they ask Ericus if they can bring Riku here to train as well and become a full-fledged Keyblade wielder, and Ericus would 100% allow it. When Terra and Aqua go to bring Riku to the land of departure, Riku is all for it, but he asks if his friend Sora can come along too. Of course, Aqua did admit she didn't want both boys to become Keyblade wielders, but Sora can come along too and maybe help his friend practice. Also, Kairi never came to Destiny Islands, since there wasn't enough of a threat in Radiant Garden to send her there, due to Xehanort being dead, so she remains there with her grandmother. Over the years, Riku would become a very good Keyblade wielder, training under Terra and Aqua, 
and Ericus would feel a light within Sora that reminds him of Ventus in more ways than one, and he would train Sora personally to see exactly what this light is. Plus, whenever Sora is around, Ventus would stir in his sleep, which greatly interests Ericus. Now we're heading into the beginning of Kingdom Hearts, which, yes, would still happen since Maleficent is still out there, and would still be trying to accomplish Xehanort's plan. When Ericus gets word of this, he tells his pupils to go and investigate the sudden disappearance of the worlds, and Terra and Aqua suggest that Riku and Sora go out instead, and this can be even better training for them. Ericus enjoys this idea, and sends out the two boys to investigate and stop Maleficent. Donald and Goofy would still arrive and help out the two, but this time, Kingdom Hearts would be a cakewalk since Riku and Sora would be extremely more skilled than their canon selves, and would deal with all the Heartless easily. Once they make their way to Hollow Bastion, free the princesses, they easily defeat Maleficent and make their way to close the door to darkness. Unfortunately though, one of the two wielders are going to have to go on the other side with Mickey to help seal the door. Without skipping a beat, Sora would go on the other side and close the door with Mickey, much to Riku's objection. But eventually, they seal the door, and all of the worlds are restored. Riku, Donald, and Goofy make their way back to the Land of Departure, and tell the Masters what happened, and how they need to save Sora and the King. Now, this wouldn't be that big of an issue, since apparently, as seen in Kingdom Hearts 3 and Remind, the wielders can just go into the Realm of Darkness as they please, so I don't see why it would be any different here. Terra and Aqua would venture inside, and find Sora and Mickey wandering along in nothingness, and easily take them back out to the World of Light. After this, things would basically go back to normal, and when it's finally time for Sora and Riku to take their mark of mastery, they would learn the power of waking. And with the power of waking, Sora attempts to awaken Ventus, and surprisingly, this works, and Ventus has returned as well. So yeah, with Ericus surviving birth by sleep and killing Xehanort early, the rest of the series would be relatively peaceful, with Maleficent being the only real big bad to stand in the way. Although, there is one more person out there who may be trouble in the future, Brie. So, I'm going to leave this video off with a poll. Would you like to see a part 2, where Bray becomes a new villain in the series? Or would you like it to end happily right here? Make sure to click up on the poll up above, and we'll see if there's a part 2 or not. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and stay tuned for more in the future. Until we meet again, see you later!